Right, so there we are, guys, backstage here at the O2 Brixton Academy in London with the man, Mr. Phil Hartnell. That was awesome, bro. <laughs> that was huge. Woo! We had dramas going on. We had dramas. Made one of our major synthesizers was playing up like they do, like a little kid. Just before, yeah, like 30 minutes before, we were like, had it in the dressing room. And it's like, oh, fucking hell. It's like, what are we going to do? It's like typical, isn't it? <laughs> like, one of the biggest gigs, you know, like second to the end of the tour. Yeah. It's going to do it and it's going to yeah. play up. But my brother, fantastic. And, you know, thought it out. And yeah, it was good. Really you guys good. worked around it well, because I mean, there's no way that I would have seen you guys on stage or listening that I would have heard anything. Was no, wrong. no, he's managed to sort it out right at the last really? minute. Oh, he actually yeah, sorted it. Really, no, he sorted <laughs> it. It's like yeah, it brilliant. So, how do you feel the show went, Phil? Oh, fantastic! Yeah, I love Brixton Academy. We've yeah. been here. Well, we played here many times. Like, we've even got our poster up. And it's your picture somewhere. It's like, oh my God, well, that, like the venue we were at yesterday, they'd like, uh, we had to put our own poster up. Like, <laughs> they, had an, they had an empty uh, empty frame. It's like, right, get a poster, right? And it's like, <laughs> well, put it in there, do a boom, because they just done it up like they have done this place. It looked a lot different. Now, we've got a lot of history with uh, the Brixton Academy. Yeah. We've played here many, many, many times over the last 20 years, you can imagine. It's probably over, tw- it must be about 20 times, something around there, 15, 10, in between there, sort of something, yeah. The way you guys did the show, lighting show as well, I know you were telling me beforehand that you have some little sneaky, tricky thing that you do with an LED lighting system. I didn't quite realise the, the grand scale of what you guys yeah, actually yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole thing about Orbital, you know, I sort of landed on my feet with Orbital in some sort of ways, and then all the money that we made from light, I love working with other creatives, you know, yeah. like video artists and yeah. lighting designers, and, you know, and that's what I was trying to explain about the, you know, I love the depth of the, okay, we've got the stage, you know, so it's like, think theatre, you know, we're twiddling knobs and pushing buttons. It's yeah. very exciting, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and, it, and, and that's what it is. So, so you've got this sort of room to sort of like, uh, you know, produce, um, you know, like a, yeah, like a show, yeah. really, yeah, you know, yeah. and I love that. So we, we consider each track individually, work out lighting, um, you know, video, work with video artists, yeah, let's go with that idea. Yeah. And, do you know what I mean? It's great. Yeah. And tonight was beautiful because, the, you know, the beginning of the tour, we had the X, you know, like you saw the X and everything like that. That is the full Monty. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like a lot of the venues we've been playing recently on this, you know, you, you can't get that because they've got the head. So it was lovely to see the full you know the full production lasers yeah. I actually went up and I just went and spoke to one of the camera crew and I was just like alright guys there's going to be a laser show on mm. within literally <laughs> and just lasers everywhere like, we have it, that's it. <laughs> so Phil tell us I've been speaking to quite a few of the audience as well and um, I mean I've known about you guys for a while but uh, there's obviously been some fans around since day one oh yeah and I mean Bless them, we've got some brilliant fans and because we can go so long it's that they're really really loyal and they're lovely you know get lovely messages and there was one uh, message particularly it was like oh this young girl's going oh my dad says you're brilliant and he's taking me along to like this gig and that gig oh I hope you enjoy it you know a bit of pressure there going yeah. and then she did email me back, or Facebook me back and said oh yeah I went yeah, I loved it loved it you know and her and her dad but that was what's beautiful about it they, they shared that moment they and I've got kids and so you yeah. can share that you know so they had a moment uh, a sort of parent and kid yeah. sort of like moment yeah. you know with that oh we've like spanned one generation <laughs> do you know what I mean like, <laughs> so it was like the, you know yeah so that was that was wonderful that was lovely well, there was someone I thought you were almost telling a story that, I, that I'd heard today because there were there was a crowd that I interviewed outside and just asked some people what they thought of the show and this girl stopped and she's like you have to speak to my dad and then she just took over and told us the story my dad, dad didn't want to talk uh, right do it because was there, was there a was there was there no seriously she got taken to her first orbital gig by her dad she also got introduced to the whole electronic scene or faithless yeah. and chemical brother and everything by her dad Fantastic. she's been to every one of the gigs dad's been one of them like a massive fan of yours for ages i just love that and they were both yeah and they were just blown away my dad basically introduced me to dance music and this is how my whole kind of music background has been through him i think within the electronic sort of like Sort of scene, if you like. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't really didn't really happen with the rock, you know, the scene before, no, whatever no. that was, the indie scene. Maybe you know, you wouldn't get on day shut on you. <laughs> but, you know I mean, yeah. it's much more open to like sort of like, you know, it's still sticking around. It's much more open. Go, oh no, come on, I'll take you to it's like going to a museum. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> let's go to the orbital. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you something, something back in my day. I'll show you something, darling. <laughs> <laughs> come here, come with me. You know, that's a, yeah, no, but it's wonderful. You know, no, no, that's one. You know, Some really wonderful. cool stories. But then I think we also spoke to someone who must have been like, you know, 21, 22, and he was just like, 
Oh, what's it's amazing. They, 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 they're the start of electronic, they're the start of techno, they're the start of this, they're the start of this, and they're just drowning. Yeah, it's like, it was really cool to see this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now listen, Phil, there's something I wanted to speak to you about, or really just ask you, is um, you guys have been now around as Orbital for 23 years, is it? 20 something like 20 that. Something 20 something like years, that? 20 something. What the hell is that like? <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. It, was like, it wasn't an ambition. Yeah. I just loved the... Uh, the sound of electronics and yeah. I got into like what the hell makes that sound and you know yep. the synthesizers got yep. in that way fiddling around with my brother yeah. da, 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 da. and um, and just like one thing led to another and, and you know um, I was I was due to go to London College of Furniture do furniture design sort of like we, we released Chime through an independent record label through Jazzy M we wanted to start up a record label that became what's known as an anthem now yeah. and, and basically we were up to like Two, three thousand, and Pete Tong from London Records uh, licensed it, and it's like, and then we ended up getting an album deal out of that. Phoned up College Gamer, can you defer it for a year? I gave myself a year, you know, and it's like twenty-three. <laughs> yeah. Maybe like, <laughs> if it all ends now, so maybe my course is still, maybe they're still holding me a place there. Like. Yeah. So you guys never had the ambition to become world famous. Well, my brother artists. did. No, my brother had more of an ambition to be like in a band and stuff like that. Yeah. But I just thought, well, you know, I can't play an instrument. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Traditionally, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're in the modern world now. <laughs> then you make wear your yeah, glasses yeah, to exactly. make it look even yeah, yeah, yeah. There quite a few people in the crowd with their little. Oh no, no somebody was selling them outside. And we oh, we right. did a limited edition, like two thousand, just for this tour, just for fun. Yeah. And then somebody was selling them some more pikey ones for five, which they weren't, uh, they weren't up to scratch. But that, they were, they were, they were because we used to play in acid house clubs, smoke groves. Yeah. Couldn't see what what the hell we were doing. Yeah. And we need it because we, we set a studio up on stage, basically, is what we do. So nothing is in arrangement. It's, it's in an arrangement. You know, you like, you've got, like, bass drum on one button. No, that's the snare drum, that's the hi-hat, da 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 And that's even sending a message from the, the main controller, whatever button you're pressing. It used to be a sequencer. Now it's sort of iPads linked to Ableton. And, and, and that then sends a message from the computer, either via MIDI, going to our instruments that we've got around, or it's an audio thing. So then that's all going into my, uh, sorry to get technical, but that all goes into my mixing desk, so we're mixing, we can add effects. So it's all, so we can last, you know, like a track can last a minute or an hour, yeah. if you like, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, you, so you're vibing off the audience, do you know what I mean? So it's, you're improvising with the structure of the song, changing sounds as they're going along, when they're getting like, oh, I've got to play this, this this sequence, you know, so and but you can manipulate the sound. And, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's all very sort of fluid and sort, you know, sort yeah. of vibe. Really. Well, it's really nice. I mean, a, a lot of the time you see the. Um big name DJs um, or up and coming DJs who want to look like they're really good, you know, twisting lots of knobs and, and doing lots of things where they're not actually really doing fuck all. <laughs> um, <laughs> that yeah. Actually, that's been going, because uh, with, with Chime in 1990, yeah. you know, like the rave scene was going on, they used to have like traditional clubs, you know, like Shelley's or whatever, you know, like sort of those high street sort of clubs. Yeah. But, you know, if somebody like Rosilla had a, a club here or something, you, you would get PAs. And it was an eye opener for us because, um, that there was a thing called air mic. It's like, what the fuck is an air mic? Air mic is it's not going anywhere. You're just going blah, 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 like that. It's, it's like a air mic. So it makes like an air guitar, really. Mm -hmm. But you know, so there were a lot of people at that time have been going around and do sort of you know mime it, which is like, well, you know, whatever floats your boat. But yeah. this is like they think that the audience don't know the difference. They don't think they don't give them enough credit yeah so i'm a member of the audience when i go see other bands so yeah. it's kind of, wait a minute you know with us it's really raw and you know and people yeah. people appreciate that uh, whether they know it or not even thought about it they they feel it and they hear it and it's just like oh fuck, yeah that was very different to the album yeah. version do you know what i mean yeah. you hear the album version you go oh <laughs> was that the same song? Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's some same artist. Sort of like, you know, and tracks got to develop live because you, you do a mistake or you do something and you go, oh, that works. And that's, you know, it's a progression from the album, yeah. really, these sort of versions. And I listen, Phil, I spoke to a lot of people um, this, this weekend, obviously, just about yourselves, and everyone's got an orbital story. Everyone's got, this is what happened, this was my first experience, or this is my bit. <laughs> That's what's, lovely, isn't it? What's yours? Oh, that's man. lovely. Uh, what's either, what's, what's your favourite one you've heard from what's someone you? before? Oh, no, you can't or do my favourites. I okay, can't do okay, favourites. Okay. I can't do favourites, like picking one of your children. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what's wonderful, you know, like you say, that what's wonderful that people actually, I hear about these stories. Yeah. 
which is what it's all about for me, the connection. Yeah. You know, so you hear about the connection, and I think, you know, we have been going a long time. Yeah. And, you know, when you get the, the parents bring their kids, yeah. you know, they're, they're like photographs, like music, like, you know, there's certain yeah. things within their time that some of our tracks sort of like what, what memories and moments like photographs yeah, are. Do you know what I mean? And music is like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so that's... And when I do hear stories, it's, it's wonderful to hear yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? It's got nothing to do with it when we made that track or what we were thinking about at the time, but it's what that means to that person. Now, Phil, we obviously first met in Ibiza when we did this photo shoot with you for Woolhouse Studios mm -hmm. out on the beach. That was really cool. That was great fun. But that night, I then got to hear Phil Hartnell, the DJ. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, now, that, that, is, that, is some, that is something different to this whole... darker side. Oh, oh, wow. 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 Well, we've, we never started off as DJs. We've been producers. Yeah. And uh, when we split up, we had a, like a sabbatical from, uh, you know, we just thought that that was the end because we weren't feeling what we were doing yeah. as orbital. And so we thought, oh, right, that's it. So sort of maybe chuck the baby out of the bathwater a bit. I'm going to get into, you know, I love the scene and everything. What's going to enthuse me? I got into, like, DJing, and uh, it was a lot of breaks at that time. Yeah. This was a long time ago now, sort of 15, 15 no, no, I don't know. I can't remember anyway. <laughs> so I got into the DJing. Absolutely loved it, and it was so inspirational, you know, like, you know, like searching for other people's music and yeah. to play out, and do you know what I mean? And I absolutely... Love it. Like tonight, you know, we're going down to Brixton Jam, doing after show parties. So you get, you know, we did one in Belfast as well. It was mental. You know, I love listening and searching for records on the DJ sets at yeah. the front. Obviously, you know, there's a splashing of all. So I've got lots of different mixes from other people that yeah. have orbital tracks, which I sort of put in there, which is, you know, rather than just play what we just heard. Yeah. You, do you know what I mean? So there's, you know, and that works really, really well. Yeah. Well, that is it. That's why we're here. I want to come and see Phil Hardnell DJ once again. Go down, come down to Bricks and Jam with me. Oh, I might have a little, yeah, little boogie. A little, a little boogie. jam. A little, little jam. Yeah. Well, good stuff, guys. Well, let's go and find out what Phil Hartnell's like as a DJ, because he's pretty fucking good as Orbital, so. Woo! <laughs> 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 Wicked, guys. Thank you very much. as a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. That's well, guys, thanks for joining myself here. Mike Perry on Lucky Life TV. And this big man over here, half of Orbital, Mr. Phil Hartnell, the DJ.